Sure, and let me do this for people who are listening, just to give a quick explanation of what these Freedom of Information Act laws are all about. There's a federal Freedom of Information Act, but every state in the United States has a Freedom of Information Act. They go by different names, Open Records Act, Public Records Act. But the, the gist of those pieces of legislation in every state is to give citizens the opportunity to see into decisions that were made behind closed doors by government officials. The statute only allows citizens right of access to public agencies, state agencies, and subdivisions of the state. <clears throat> and so in this uh, Big Ten debacle, if I can call it that, you have 13 public universities and one private university. And one of the greatest weapons available to a trial lawyer who's dealing with a litigation matter involving a university or any state agency is the Freedom of Information Act in that particular state. Now, I'm not involved in the Nebraska litigation. I'm not involved in any litigation at all. I don't plan to be. I got into this because my phone started <laughs> ringing, quite frankly, and it started ringing that weekend when the decision was made. And my, I was getting text messages from uh, various people who I uh, helped in the past. And, uh, and I, uh, I've, I've, I've said this before, uh, you know, I consider it a compliment from some of my colleagues who said that I can't walk past an injustice and just keep on walking. And I think that's right. And I, I could cite examples of uh, cases that I handled 25 years ago <clears throat> that most lawyers wouldn't have touched. Uh, but I took them on because I believed in the cause and I just felt like I had the ability to, you know, bring some justice to the situation. And that's entirely what motivated me to get involved here. But it's much like the whole Miss case. When uh, Mike Anderson called me, I, I thought it'd probably take me two or three hours to help him out. You know, said the same thing to uh, Trey Nixon's mom. Now it's probably going to take me a couple hours, and uh, it's no big deal. Well, it turned out that was the biggest math mistake in my career because it ended up taking me about four months on the front stop. But you know, once I got into it, I wasn't about to quit. And the same thing has sort of happened here. I yep. got into this thinking I could help with some Freedom of Information Act requests because that happens to be, uh, coincidentally happens to be something that I've been very involved in uh, since, since I got out of law school. In fact, the reason Mike Huckabee hired me to be his lawyer was because the Attorney General of Arkansas had, had sued him under the State Freedom of Information Act and I was known to be a lawyer in Arkansas, had some experience in, uh, in that area. And so this is something I've I've dealt with for my whole career, I've ad adopted a new strategy. I'm going straight to the core. I'm going to find out about, I'm going to find out everything there is to know about this vote, if there is one, because there is no way with 13 universities in the crosshairs <clears throat> asking for that targeted information between August 7th and today's day, just the president's email communications with other presidents and Kevin Warren, there's, First of all, that's a very limited request. There's no excuses. They can't say, well, you got to pay us $6,000 to get those documents. That, that IT department can run that search in, in an hour. They don't have any excuse now to say, this is going to take us forever. <clears throat> um, so that's the difference, getting back to your question, this Venn diagram. Even if Mike Flood gets everything the judge has ordered them to produce, uh, they're not going to willingly produce the what they think are confidential emails between university presidents and other university presidents and, and their president and Kevin Warren. And it's been my experience. Uh, I don't say this disrespectfully to anybody. I have close friends who've been college presidents. As a group, and I'm generalizing, they're not the type of people who, who stop and think about the Freedom of Information Act before they hit the send button and send an email to somebody. They, you know who thinks that way? Athletic directors and coaches, they do. But um, it's, it's a lot harder to find the kind of information you're really looking for when you're trying to get it out of the athletics department. But 
the, the just general rule university presidents you know use email the same way everybody else does and i'm no exception there's there's probably not a person listening to this that hasn't sent an email at some time that they later thought maybe i shouldn't have said it that way and and that they're going to have to answer those they're going to have to answer pretty soon and there's just no way out of that there's no way out of that trap. Cool.